everyone, and welcome to the Willy Wonka Fibers podcast. Uh, my name is Anne, and this podcast is about my knitting, spinning, uh, my indie dye business, my indie design business, and all kinds of fun, crafty things. Today is Monday, June 27th. This is episode 20. Uh, if you're new to the podcast, thank you for taking a little time to check me out. And uh, if you're a returning listener viewer, Thank you so much. I really appreciate um, all of you who choose to come back and spend a little time with me every week. Um, let's see, you can find me on the web at my main website, which is www.willywonkafiber.com. I'm on uh, Ravelry with a Ravelry group that's Willy Wonka Fibers, as well as Instagram and Facebook as Willy Wonka Fibers. And if you're interested in my personal uh, Ravelry page. I am. My username is Bunny Spinner. So it's almost the end of June. I have no idea where the time has gone. It's obviously some weird wrinkle in time space continuum thing. Cause I'm pretty sure we just finished the holidays, didn't we? Like Christmas, New Year's. Pretty sure. Yeah. Uh, but no, apparently not. So here we are, zipping through the year. It's just about half done, which is kind of crazy. Um, we, last week, after I talked to you guys, we had stinking hot weather for multiple days in a row. It was easily 100 plus degrees on our deck. Uh, the dogs and I in the afternoon just hungered downstairs in our in our basement with the air conditioner running. I shouldn't really call it our basement. We have a split level house and the bottom half of our house is built into the hill. So you can walk out and it's completely finished. I mean, we have a like mother-in-law suite kind of thing down here with a bathroom, full bathroom and my office is down here. And you can see I have a window. There's actually sunlight today kind of blowing out the colors on things. But um, yeah, it's uh, finally, cool down a little bit. We're getting the afternoon clouds that mean that instead of going up to 100 and sitting there and being that stinking hot, we have a little breeze in the afternoon, a little bit of cloud cover, so low to mid 80s. Um, I can I can take that over to the 100 plus degrees. Um, so anyway, I know y'all aren't here to listen to me talk about the weather, but uh, let's get going on some fun stuff. Um, the first thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about um, is a finished object. It was finished a while ago, so this is not something that counts for Stash Dash or anything I'm working on right now, but it is this pattern. Um, I am fortunate enough to be friends with two really great guys, the yarn guys. Dennis and Jeffrey. Um, they are North American distributors for uh, Rami Wools. Um, you might be familiar with the Norwegian ski sweaters that like the Olympic team wears. If it's not Dolly um, yarn, it's their yarn. They have wonderful lines. They're really, really lovely yarns. They have a bunch of fingering weight um, options, including kind of a traditional jumper uh, color work, fingering weight, but they also have some really nice soft yarns like this uh, great wool alpaca um, blend that I'm, I'm working with for them uh, for a contract piece. They have it in a DK and a fingering, so um, you know, not just for scratchy ski sweaters. And I enjoy working with them. Um, we met at Yarn Fest two years ago. Uh, Dennis actually was popping through the main lobby while I was sitting waiting to uh, chit chat with a friend and I was working on a shawl pattern and he stopped and we had a conversation and we found out that we have a lot in common so I've run into the guys at multiple shows we usually try to have dinner together they're just delightful people um, and so I've done a little bit of other contract work for them um, some kits for their yarns uh, for pattern support but when I was at yarn fest this past year, uh, the end of March. Uh, we had dinner together and the guys approached me and said, you know, this is our fifth anniversary of our shop and this is our fifth anniversary together personally. We would really like to do a fifth anniversary commemorative piece that we could sell as a kit and we'd like to use some of your yarn, my yarn, and we'd like you to design the pattern. 
so we got talking about you know different themes and stuff we could do and you know good old Google I said well what's the fifth anniversary like what do you what do people give for fifth anniversary and out came the phones um, and it turns out the fifth anniversary gift is wood and so we kind of riffed off that and decided it would be really fun to do a sort of wood themed tree themed piece um, and I asked the guys what their favorite um, tree was and they both said white birch so this was like a total no-brainer right I mean that was handed to me so easy and then as we got talking even more we got talking about the um, druidic alphabet the Ohem alphabet um, which are a series of, of carved symbols that stand for different letters and the first letter of the alpha of that alphabet is B which is symbolized by the birch so all this stuff started pulling together kind of sharing the design thought process with you guys here um, so for this shawl what, we, what I opted to do is I designed um, a speckle dyed colorway called white birch and that's what you see here and then paired it with um, a really dark dark green called black forest um, for a little bit of contrast and I dyed this up in my Nimue sock which is 50 percent silk 50 percent wool one of my go-to's for shawls and I designed this triangular shawl for them it's not quite a traditional shape it's a little bit elongated so it wears better I think um, so the top portion which is in white birch just has some really straightforward um, garter stitch texture and then there's a very simple set of stripes and a color work band right here that is the B symbol for birch a little bit more stripes then a big birch leaf border more of the color work and it's just finished off with a little garter stitch hem um, really drapey I think a good size it's not huge um, and it takes two skeins one skein of each of the colors um, the guys currently have this kitted up in their shop and um, this pattern will be uh, now available to the general public so you can just download the pattern if you if you want to knit that there's also a link um, in the Ravelry pattern uh, information down at the bottom that links back to their store so if you'd like a kit that's exactly this gives you a copy of the pattern plus the two colors of yarn the white birch and the Black Forest, uh, you can talk to them at their shop. I'm actually sending them another box of the of this yarn uh, in these colors tomorrow, hopefully tomorrow, assuming everything's dry. I finished dyeing it this morning. So um, if you love it and want it, rock on. Really a fun pattern to knit. There's always something kind of different going on as you work through. Um, nothing too scary or difficult. Um, you do need to know how to read charts. Uh, for the little bit of color work here and then of course for the lace but other than that this is not a super hard project it looks more complex than it actually is and um, so anyway so that is available as of today on Ravelry I'll link to it in the project um, show notes show notes excuse me and the fun part is is that the guys have asked me if I will do a quarterly kit for them themed on other trees that are within this Celtic alphabet so look for those rolling out. The next one's going to happen in September. <clears throat> and Dennis and I talked about our long-range plans for that on the phone. Um, so if you run into the yarn guys at any of the major shows, they do all the Vogue knittings, I believe, and they do all the stitches, Yarn Fest, probably some other ones thrown in in the Midwest because they're kind of in that Chicago corridor. Um, please be sure to go by and... Um, take a look at their booth they've got some lovely products um, and then they've also got a whole bunch of kits that they're carrying that are my designs for either their yarn or my yarn um, so that's the Bietha, Bietha shawl um, ready and raring to go grab a copy if you love it so let's move on to other finished objects um, I was working on a pair of hand spun socks the cabin socks I showed you guys those last week 
Um, they are finished, but I do not have them to show you. I will link to my project page if you're interested in seeing the final versions. Um, one of our cousins who was at the family reunion that we went to at the end of May contacted me and asked me if I would uh, if she could buy a pair of hand knit socks off of me and I just finished those up and she's up in Michigan where they do get very cold winters and so um, she liked the colors in those enough I boxed them up and sent them off to her gone so <laughs> those are off to their new happy life in Michigan she's got gotten them already um, so those are finished uh, and so those counted towards the hand spun knit along that I'm hosting this year in my Ravelry group plus the Knitting Broomsticks year, uh, Sock Club 2016, um, which is just to knit, knit a goal number of socks, and my goal is as many as possible. Easy goal. Um, I'm up to 12, if you're counting. I'm up to 12 so far this year. Um, yeah, so those are, those are done. And then the other thing that I didn't think I was going to finish, but I actually kind of nose to the grindstone in the sense that I just sat and got the knitting bug. I was watching some PBS documentaries on the Tudors. Finished up. That's my talisman shawl, which I'm wearing this morning. Um, this is the first shawl in Helen Stewart's Shawl Society. Um, and again, it's the talisman shawl. I knit the size medium, which um, there are three sizes in the pattern. And this is the medium. Um, I used a little bit less yarn than she called for. This was 560 yards of fingering weight and I believe the pattern calls for 600 or maybe even 650. Um, but at any rate, uh, this is knit up in my Gaia sock which is um, fingering weight singles superwash merino. It's in the Bluebells colorway and you can see it's got a little texture pattern throughout. It's a very elongated crescent and then it just has a simple lace border with a pico bind off. Um, blacked out to a really nice wearable size. Um, it's not super long in the back, but it definitely, um, you know, comes around your shoulders nicely. Um, I kind of almost toyed with putting some beads on the picots, but I didn't have a set that I loved and I plan to wear this a lot of places I don't think I would want beads banging into chairs and stuff so I'm okay with that out it but if I knit it again I think I would do that because I think it would be a really pretty little way to finish off this edging um, yeah so I really enjoyed this shawl it was a nice you know relaxing knit it's got a lot of stockinette in it the last eight rows are really <laughs> really long though. They've got over 500 stitches in this size. Um, so they're a little bit of a slog but you know once you get that close you kind of have the carrot because you want to finish the project. So this will count towards my stash dash total. Um, my total here at the end of week four, just finished up week four of the 12, um, was I believe just over 6,400 meters and I misspoke that last week when I was talking about my totals. I think I'm I think I said them in yards, but stash dash is measured in meters. So 6,400 and some spare change meters um, with this project, the hand spun socks, and the spin that I finished that I'll show you guys in a little bit. Um, so I'm feeling pretty good about that because that is over the third. You know, if I'm if I'm shooting for the 15K mark, 5,000 yards would be my kind of line in the sand for the end of this first third. So I'm doing okay so far. Um, we'll see We'll see how it goes. So let's talk about things that I am actively working on that would contribute to that magic stash dash total. Um, I'm working on the shawl project for the Hill Country um, Austin area yarn crawl. I would actually have it finished except I had, had knit it up to about the halfway point and decided I didn't like what I was doing with it at all and I ripped the entire thing out. And it's about a 500 yard project so you know I lost let's say 225 yards of it and then I've re-knit all of that. So I'm now again at about the halfway point on that project which I can't show you but it is on track now and 
that's going to be my focus project. Um, my goal is to have that completely finished, put to bed this week, ready to go for testing and TEing. Um, and I think I can do it. It's a fairly straightforward project and um, I just need to put the time in on it. Um, so that is on the needles. The next thing that I did once I finished those um, hand spun socks is I decided I would tackle the next um, half finished pair of socks of the self striping ones. So I had this this um, sock done in the white sand self striping colorway. So this was uh, up in the shop in February. So this one was already completed. Um, and so I cast, or I, yeah, I cast on the other one earlier in the week. I want to say maybe Tuesday. But that might not be right. Earlier in the week sometime. Um, and so I've almost got this one done. I mean, it's kind of sad that I couldn't quite get it together last night. I have to finish the heel. Um, so I'm doing these on size, U.S. size ones, the 2.25 millimeters, uh, 64 stitch um, circumference. I actually made the leg a little bit longer than I usually do on these. I'm not sure why, except, I don't know, I had something in my brain about it, but at any rate, um, I'm doing these with an afterthought heel and my usual kind of wide toe. So I think I can say fairly safely that <laughs> these will be done this week. Um, I probably will actually finish the heel up tonight. I think I have maybe eight rounds to do, four decrease rounds, four just knit, knit around, and then these will be done. So that was my goal to, um, I had three half pairs of socks of the self stripings. And so I finished one up already in June. These I was going to knit in July. It's cl close enough to July. These are my July pair. And so I have one other pair that I'll stick on the needles and finish up when I need kind of some instant gratification. Since the first socks are already done, knit one sock, call the pair good, count all the yardage. Um, so anyway, so those are just about done. And um, next, the next thing that I have on my needles, well, let me back up. We'll talk about this this way. I decided that because with my upcoming surgery in July, I want to kind of clear the decks of, of some stuff. I don't think that I'm going to want to do... I have some projects that I will be working on that are design projects that I have to have brain power to do. And I know my brain is likely to be somewhat limited during this recovery period. So what I decided would be smart is that I need to earmark the things that are must get dones um, during my recovery time that I know I need to be able to think about and budget my time to just work on those more difficult projects. And then anything else needs to be pretty simple, pretty straightforward, pretty if I fall asleep in the middle of it, it's fine kind of projects. Um, and I made the decision this weekend because I was going to fra um, take take out the three or so inches of the body I had knit on my heathered cardi um, and put that back on the needles and do some more raglan increases. I decided since my row gauge is off, was off and for whatever reason I was just having a really hard time getting engaged with that project that I was just going to frog it. And I did not want to lose the probably 350 yards that I had knit already. It was close to that. But I just, I couldn't get myself geared up to work on it. I don't, I don't know why, because normally I'm a very like process or project knitter, you know, put it on the needles, knit the thing, finish the thing. I just couldn't go there. I, I don't know why. The pattern is lovely. It's a great wardrobe staple. It's exactly what I wanted. It's in a colorway I know I would use a ton. I just can't get on board with it. So I decided to just rip that back. And then there's kind of a catharsis there where you're just like, okay, now I'm not going to think about that project anymore because it's not even on the needles. So I will do something else with the yarn. It's um, Elizabeth Lavold's Silky Wool in a charcoal gray. There's lots of things I could do with it. I just decided right now, not gonna put that on my list. Um, and I think I had commented on this back when I was kind of loading in some works in progress before Stash Dash even started. I rarely have multiple works in progress. That's really, really rare for me. Most of the time I have a project, 
I knit on that project, you know, I might have two, kind of one portable and one sit at my desk and read a chart kind of project. But beyond that, it's pretty rare that I would have multiple projects going on at once. And I don't know, for some reason right now, that also has been kind of bugging me. So there's a way to fix that, right? Just frog that project back. It's gone limited things on the needles. So when I finish the striped, striped sock heel that I have left to do, the next project I decided on was another pair of socks. I'm in a sock knitting mood right now. They're great for summer. They're portable. Um, I've got a lot of appointments and stuff coming up. Times I got to sit around and wait for things. Socks are great for that. So um, what I decided I would do, and I wound this up this weekend, I'm trialing out a new sock yarn base for the shop. And if I love it as much as I think I'm going to, it will make its debut at the Salida Fiber Festival in September. And I also experimented with some new colorways, and I came up with this one that I really love called Asters. It's got blue, purple, blurples in it, some lavender, and just little shots of kind of a brassy orange. Um, that's probably pretty close. It's getting blown out a little bit in the sun. Um, but it's a speckle dye, and the new sock base is a 75-25 blend of um, Targi wool, which I've mentioned before as being one of my favorites, and nylon. So it's a great bouncy yarn. Um, it's multi multiplied. It's got a really nice squish factor to it, but then I think it's going to wear great with the nylon in it. So this is my next project, which will, you know, tick off a couple of boxes. It'll be, see how this new colorway knits up, see how the new yarn potentially knits up, um, and I'll be working on a sock project. And I decided I didn't want to just do another pair of plain vanillas because I have a feeling I'm going to have a bunch of plain vanillas this summer. So I picked a pattern that was not super hard and not super easy. It was kind of Goldilocks, somewhere in between, called The Sign of the Prancing Pony, and I will link to that in the show notes. The design is by my friend Claire Ellen, who's um, done some designs for my shop before, and she has a ton of great, great sock patterns. She has two, um, I think it's two, it might even be three. I'll, I'll link to Claire's um, designer page on Ravelry so you guys can see what she's got, but she does a lot of themed um, collections. So for instance, I think she's got at least two, if not three, Lord of the Rings socks, um, sock collections. And it's it's most of the characters you can think about, plus some of the places like the sign of the Prancing Pony. And then she's got some that are themed on Shakespeare. Um, she's got this really fun pair that are themed after the Globe Theater, um, plus Romeo and Juliet. Uh, I think she's got the Scottish play in there. Um, anyway, ton of fun things, and I've decided to go with the sign of the Prancing Pony. It's Lord of the Rings. It's themed on horses. It's a purpley yarn. This is like the perfect project for me, isn't it? I mean, could I ask for anything more? And it's got a fairly simple kind of cable -y lace um, horseshoe pattern. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, on the leg and then down onto the foot. So I'm going to cast that on as soon as I'm done with the stripy socks, and that will be my other kind of tr take to appointments, wait in line, fun project. Um, and that would be the, the, that plus the, the sample I'm working on for Hill Country are the only two things that I have on the needles right now, if you can believe that. Um, so I'm going to go along with the sock plan for a little while and see how that works out. And then... Um, Go from there. I may wind up adding on a couple other things, um, easier scarves or something like that. Maybe do some Christmas knitting. We'll see. I haven't decided, but I figure that's keeping my options open and um, not taxing my brain too much. So anyway, that's what's on the needles right now. Um, I did want to also mention if you participated in last week's. Um, Joyful Lace giveaway. I did pick those winners on Wednesday, one for my Instagram feed and one for my Ravelry group feed. So congratulations to um, Puffy Cats. 
um, who won that from my Ravelry group and the Twisted Stitches podcast, um, the host there. And I'm going to not say your name correctly. Tui? T-H-U-Y. Um, congratulations to you and Karen for winning those copies. I hope that you guys have something wonderful that you want to knit out of that book. Um, a great summer project. Lots of lace. Um, shawls are always good. So uh, let's move on to spinning. That seems good. Tour de Fleece is kicking off this Saturday, July 2nd. Um, I'm excited. I think it's going to be a really wonderful year. I'm looking forward to you know, participating in a few groups. Um, the teams that I'm on, obviously, Willy Wonka Fibers team, kind of a no-brainer. Um, and then I'm also um, participating through Laura, um, who is the host of the Corner of Knit and Tea podcast. Laura's got a group going, also very casual. Um, so I'm going to participate there. And then I'm also co-moderating and participating in the Spin Your Stash group, uh, which is particularly appropriate since I'm going to try to focus on my Spin the Bin project, which is all stash. So um, what I finished up this week, um, this is a combo spin that I had been working on for the last couple of weeks. This is one ply of wool gatherings, um, an unknown, unnamed red color, and two of by hands potions masters, potions master, which was a dark, kind of plummy purple. Um, both of the original colorways were on Polworth, which is one of my favorites. So I spun the singles up um, and then plied them lightly, I guess is the way to describe it. I didn't put a ton of extra twist in because I was thinking I wanted to uh, do a shawl. And I love how this how this came out. I think that's pretty close on the colors right there. It's got gorgeous reds, purples. It's just really rich colors. Um, so I'm earmarking this. I got 870 yards of, of a two ply, um, just under eight ounces. I had a little bit of extra on one of the bobbins, but pretty closely, evenly spun. Um, so I'm earmarking this for a shawl at some point. Um, I've got such good yardage with it. Uh, I hated to split it up and do, you know, two smaller things, but for right now, that's my current plan. Um, came out really great. I'm just super happy with how the, the colors blended um, and another eight ounces out of my bin. Um, so the 870 yards, I can't remember what that converted to in meters, maybe 790 something, I think, uh, also went towards my stash dash totals for this week, which was a nice chunk of yards. And that was, that one made me very happy. Um, you know, I've sort of bemoaned in the past the fact that I like to spin things fingering weight. And if you're trying to spin for pounds, pounds used, you don't get through that very fast. But if you're calculating the length, this is actually a bonus. So, yeah, I'm very happy with that. Um, go and stash and marinate for a little while, but at some point it'll, it'll see the light of day. <clears throat> So with that off my wheel, I decided I'm going to tackle the next thing in my spin the bin. This is um, another very well marinated um, braid from Funky Carolina. This is a 60-40 um, merino bamboo blended roving. And the colorway is Emo Princess. Just gorgeous soft teals and greens and rose. I love this. I think it's going to be beautiful. So again, spinning probably for a shawl. Um, I really like the Merino Tencel and the Merino Bamboo blends for shawls. They just have a gorgeous drape. Um, and I was trying to decide what else, if anything special, I wanted to do with this. I was looking through a book last, one of my reference books last night about um, adding beads or spinning with a like a silk binder but I think I'm just going to two ply this I think that's where this is going um, so anyway that's on the wheel this week 
Looking forward to spinning it. Here's the little card that came with it. Carrie didn't have like business cardy kind of things. They were just little quick tags. So those four ounces will go on the wheel this week. Um, I don't think I'm going to try to do anything crazy or special to kick off to the tour other than that probably I will try to get a fair amount of spinning in on Saturday, um, well and Sunday over the weekend. So if I don't get this completely finished before Saturday, and I probably won't, um, it'll be the thing I apply this weekend and then I'll start on the next thing in the bin. So um, that's what's on the wheel upcoming. Um, and again, if you're interested in spinning along with us, um, the Willy Wonka Fibers group has a tour de fleece thread. Um, there'll be prizes. We're going to do some small prizes each week and then a grand prize uh, when the tour finishes, which I believe is July 24th. Um, let me look really quick on my book and see if I have it. Yes, Sunday, July 24th. So that will be, um, we'll, I'll draw the, the grand prize uh, right after the tour finishes. And it'll be just, you know, some fun things. Um, I've got some roving already set aside as part of the prize. We're going to probably do some smaller things like uh, wraps per inch gauges. Um, yeah, it'll be fun. I think I think uh, it will be a good time, and it always is a great excuse to do some some hand spinning. gives you gives you a reason to do it. Focus on that, and then coming on the heels of that, we've also got the Ravelin Ravelinix and the Ravelinic Games, which will run concurrent with the Summer Olympics. So, got a whole bunch of stuff, fun stuff happening this summer. So I hope that you'll be interested in joining in some of that. It's kind of fun to be part of the larger crafting community, um, even if you're maybe not a huge fan of the Tour de France, maybe you're not into bike races, it is fun if you spin to participate in that. And I know there's some other Tour de some things like Tour de Sac uh, that are also uh, happening this summer. So you got, have lots and lots of options to choose from if you decide you want to participate in one of these great things. So I think that that is it for this week. Um, next week and the following week, uh, let's see here. Yeah, so next Monday is July 4th, which is a holiday here in the States. So I will not be podcasting on Monday. It will be Tuesday. And then the following week, which is I would normally podcast on Monday the 11th, I'm actually going to also need to push that out to Tuesday the 12th. So the next two podcasts will happen on Tuesdays rather than Mondays, but I will be back to talk to you within a week and a little bit, um, keep you up to date on all the things going on at this end. So until then, I hope you all have a wonderful work week wherever you are with some beautiful weather to enjoy and lots of great crafting time. So take care everyone. I will talk to you next week.